All right, perfect. So we're going to start. I'm logged in right now. Um, I am logged in. Um, so I went through, did the login screen. Um, and one of the first things we're going to talk about is why we even want to use landmarks. Um, landmarks are important for a lot of reasons. Um, the, the biggest reason being uh, we use landmarks because they show up on our map. Um, landmarks show up just like a trailer um, on our map. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that. Uh, landmarks are going to show as uh, blue um, stars, and then we also have uh, trailers that show up as green dots. So landmarks are going to show up on here. Landmarks are important to you guys. Landmarks could be um, a headquarters. Um, landmarks could be also be an unfriendly location, maybe a place you don't want your trailers, like a competitor or someplace like that. So. Um, Lots of things that you can do with landmarks. We have some customers that have upward of 500 landmarks um, that they use. So um, the sky's the limit here. Uh, we don't limit you on the number of tra uh, the number of landmarks you can use. The other neat part about our landmarks is we also geofence our landmarks. So we draw a boundary around those landmarks. So that's an important feature because um, obviously it's not just hitting that one point of the landmark, but maybe it's a large landmark that if your trailer is anywhere within that uh, circumference of that landmark, you want to be alerted um, and know uh, right away when it's there. So we're going to dive a little further into that. Um, I guess the next question would be, why, why do we even want to use alerts for landmarks? Um, so we can alert uh, two different ways. Uh, one's via email and the other is via text messaging. Um, so I guess the big reason for alerting is a lot of people, um, maybe your customer more so than anyone, wants to know when a trailer has arrived, um, wants to know that trailer is getting close, um, wants to know um, if that trailer has departed a certain area. So that's really why the alerts of these landmarks are important and why we're going to focus on that today. Um, it might not mean much to you, um, but it could mean a lot to your customer. And uh, that's one awesome feature that we have within Road Ready is you don't have to have a user ID and be in Road Ready in order to get alerts and notifications. So that's the other neat part uh, that we that we do within Road Ready is uh, alerting customers that aren't even in the system. So, with that said, we're going to dive into the two easy ways to set up a landmark. The first being right from your map. So right now I'm hovered over a um, uh, a trailer. So hover over, uh, I'm just going to show you lots of information um, and of course for today we're going to focus on creating a landmark. So if I went ahead and hovered over my uh, trailer and went ahead and create landmark and click on this, I'm just going to pull this up so you can see it. Um, you can see right now our trailer's uh, rolling down the road here. Um, so uh, if it were to be over maybe here at this location, um, you know, or maybe it's near a location that I want a landmark, I could go ahead and start adding in my landmark. I'm going to dive further into this. I just wanted to show you the two options of how to set up a landmark and where you can do it within our system. So the first one is right from our map. Uh, you can do it from the large map, uh, which is the, the map icon up here on the top, or you can do it from your fleet dashboard, uh, which is the map and the table view. So same thing, you hover over and you can come right here and click on create a landmark. The other way uh, to do a landmark um, is to do it within your settings. Um, your settings icon is the gear uh, near the middle of the page. If you click on that, you'll, be, uh, you'll see a whole bunch of different options, and you're going to go to landmark settings. And from here, uh, the same uh, pop-up is going to appear. I'm going to go ahead and click add a landmark. And as you can see, um, what we just saw kind of shows up. The difference is you don't see the trailer and it doesn't zoom in on where the trailer is located. You're doing this just based on not necessarily where a trailer is, but just wanting to add a landmark of a specific location. So we're going to go ahead and get started here on creating a landmark. Um, the first thing you want to do is add a name for this landmark. Uh, so we're going to go ahead, we're going to call this our headquarters. So we're going to add that. And then location, um, location here, you want to leave this blank. Um, what's actually going to show up here is once you've created that landmark, the closest address to that landmark is what's actually going to show up. Um, your idle goal days. So your idle goal days is how many, um, basically what's the goal for having idle trailers here? So um, if your goal is less than three days, then you're going to want to make it, um, uh, you'll want to make that a three. If it's less than five days, you'll go ahead and make that a five. So I'm going to say that I don't want a trailer sitting here any longer than five days. Um, and then you can go ahead and add in your um, 
description. This is your field to do kind of whatever you want. Um, kind of give it a, a better name, maybe something longer than what you had in. Um, so now, um, now I gotta kind of put a fence around my landmark here. So two ways to do it. I'm gonna show you um, kind of a little bit of the longer way, and that is by scrolling in. Um, so you can see you have a map. Um, you're gonna go ahead and zoom in on this map. And by zooming in, um, basically what you're doing is using the map just like a Google map, since this is a Google API that we use. Um, I prefer to go in a satellite view. It kind of shows you a little bit more of the geography that you're working with and kind of just, you can see the tree lines better, um, obviously you can see parking lots, uh, things like that. So I'm, I'm zooming in here and, oh, this looks like a nice place to salty dog. Um, so we're going to go ahead and um, we would landmark around the salty dog. So um, you would just go ahead and, and click around and we're going to get into that in a second. But again, this is how you would use the map function of zooming in to create a landmark. Um, the other way to do it, and I think this is the easier way, is if you know the address of that location. So um, I'm going to go ahead and add our address. What's our street address? 310. 310. And what's the, no, what is it? East Elmwood. East Elmwood. I forgot the east. That's why Adam's here. So East Elmwood, and then you can see as you type, the more you type, it starts to narrow that search down. So you can see we're in Faulkner, New York. Um, this is actually where we're located right now. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And you can see it automatically zooms into where we're at and where we're sitting currently. So I'm going to zoom out just a little bit, wrong way. And you can kind of see a little bit more of the, the features right here of um, our headquarters. So um, easiest way to do it is the, the best way to do it, start clicking. So the first dot We'll give you that, and as you click, you just keep getting dots. So I'm going to keep going. The great part about this feature is that um, you can do it any shape you want to. So I have my dots ready. Um, I've kind of, you know, fenced off my area, and now I click the one, and the one basically closes that loop. So now I have my loop here, and it's set and ready to go. Um, another nice feature is if you did something wrong and maybe didn't get everything you needed, you can go ahead and <clears throat> grab uh, red dots. You can also grab gray dots and just kind of start dragging around to make that bigger um, and, and get what you're looking for um, there. So this is also a great feature if you have to come back in another time and edit that landmark. Uh, maybe you bought more land um, at your headquarters and you want to stretch that out a little bit further. You can come in later and, and edit that. So you would uh, you'd come in and you'd uh, drag this all out and uh, make it bigger. So, all right, so basically we've created our landmark. Uh, we got everything that we need. Uh, once you're ready to go, you go ahead and you click Add. So we already have this landmark, and the reason why I did this was so that you could see that once you've, you know, it doesn't allow you to make multiple landmarks on top of multiple landmarks. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change this to Headquarters 2, and then all I'm going to do is move this geofenced location over a bit. So now it's going to let me add that in. Um, since I already had one with a similar location, um, it's not going to let me uh, create that, that uh, landmark. So went ahead and uh, moved that around for you. So you can see these are all the landmarks that we have underneath our truck light fleet. So our truck light fleet is our milk run that runs around um, to all our locations. Um, so you can see um, one I just added, Headquarters 2. Now if I want to go in and edit that, I'm just going to go ahead, click that pencil, and uh, I'll come in. Again, it, it defaults to the map view, and then you can default out and go to the satellite view. So let me get back out of here. So that's creating your landmarks, um, and obviously you see that you have your landmarks. Um, you, you put a fence around that. Um, again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to send them to Adam uh, right into the chat um, and he'll, uh, he'll help you out. So, so now you have your landmarks and it comes to the next question of what do you do now that you have all the landmarks. It's great to know when they're there. You can see it on the map. Um, so if we come out here to our map, um, I see my landmarks um, and we can see our landmarks showing up. So we have, this is the new one we just built, Headquarters 2. Um, we have our, our different ones here. 
Um, and then you can obviously just see landmarks. If you wanted to see just that, um, you can see those as well. So you have your landmarks um, and your trailers go away. So if I come back, I can just see my trailers and then I can see both. Um, so it's great. We can see that it's within a landmark, um, but I want to get alerts um, as soon as those start entering um, into uh, certain landmarks. So same thing, uh, like we did when we set up the landmark, we go to the gear, uh, the gear is there, and we come in, and you can see multiple options, and you're going to come over here to the left hand, or the right hand side, and you'll see alerts and notifications, um, and you can get started on an alert. So you're going to go ahead and click add alert. and there's basically three phases, uh, I guess maybe three and a half, uh, to creating an alert. The first is naming it, um, and then you pick the alert type, um, the parameters for that alert, and then the notification you want. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to call this alert headquarters. And then um, you'd go ahead and you'd click landmark and alert parameters. So at this point, what you do is you decide uh, what, what do you want to know. So I think for us, um, we want to know when trailers arrive and when trailers depart our headquarters. Um, you can set this up for multiple uh, landmarks. You don't have to do just one at a time. You can pick as many of these as you want. Simply click Add and they slide over to your selected landmarks. You come on down. So the next step is maybe there's only a group of trailers that you want to be alerted on and maybe there's just one trailer that you want to be alerted on when it arrives and when it departs a certain landmark. So if you have groups entered into Road Ready, you can click on the group. You can see as soon as I clicked on that, you can see the trailers that were marked because this is our fleet. I go ahead and I click Add, and then they slide over. Now, if you mess up, obviously you can clear those trailers by hitting Clear. Um, maybe you don't want a group. Maybe you just want um, two trailers. And again, you just click Add, and they slide over. The last piece, um, so we did the name, uh, we chose the alert type, we added in our parameters, and now we want to decide how we're going to be notified. So two delivery methods, you have email and you have um, And then you can choose your occurrence. Maybe this is, um, maybe this is a one-time thing. So it's a hot, um, a hot load that you need to get uh, over to a certain location. You want to know as soon as it arrives, and maybe that's all you want to know. Um, if that's the case, then you would just click that one-time event and then proceed from there. If it's a permanent, it's a place, it's a common customer, a um, place where things go a lot, um, you're going to go ahead and um, you're going to go ahead and put in um, permanent, permanent event. Um, that permanent event is going to always uh, basically just keep going. It doesn't go away. It's always there. Um, and then the last one is a recurring event. So you have a start and an end date. So maybe it's, um, you know, for a customer that you're doing work for for, you know, a couple months. You could go ahead and enter in a start date and end date for that and just have it as a recurring. So um, I'm going to go ahead and um, click this as a permanent event, and I'm going to say arrival and departures for headquarters. Perfect. Um, so you just add in some text. We have standard text, obviously, that we would send. Um, this is kind of your own message. We let you know, um, obviously, the name of the landmark. We let you know the time that the event occurred. We let you know the trailer uh, that entered that yard or left that yard, um, whatever it might be. So this is just a little added text for you um, if you want to, to add something specific. Um, the hear, next step is to go ahead and apply um, uh, who, who it goes to. So you can uh, choose anybody. You can choose everybody. Um, so select all obviously gives you everybody. Um, maybe there's just a couple, couple people in here that you want to have this added to. You're going to go ahead and choose those people. You're going to click Add. And then remember, uh, when a user set up, they uh, enter in a phone number and they enter in an email address, um, or the administrator, I should say, puts that information in. I know when we initially set up users, uh, we go ahead and put information that we have and enter that in. So, um, so we went ahead and did that. So here's where you can start adding contacts. So maybe it's not a user in the system that cares. Maybe maybe it's somebody outside of uh, Road Ready, out of your Road Ready system, a customer that you don't want to give access to uh, to the whole system, uh, but you do want to know, let them know when arrival and departures are happening. 
So to do that, um, you're going to use your contacts. So these two people in here are our contacts. Um, but what we can do is right from here, create a new contact. So we're going to create Nate and Nate at gmail.com and we'll add his phone number. Perfect. And then we're going to add Nate. So then Nate enters in. He's now added um, and we're going to go ahead and add him over. And then there's two options here. So um, there's create and then there's save as profile. So I'm going to um, get into this a little bit more here in a second, but um, create basically takes that and sends it right over and now it's, it's ready to go. You have it created as, as an alert. This might be, um, let's see, this might be an alert that uh, is something that you might use over and over again where you just change a few things. Maybe you change the trailers. Um, maybe you change the landmarks, but it's a very common alert where the people are always the same, um, maybe the contacts are always the same. What would you do with that is you would save it as a profile. So um, I'm going to save this as a profile so I can kind of show you the next step. You can see on the side here you have um, your alerts. You have So right now I'm in Manage Alerts. This shows you all the alerts that you currently have on the system. Um, and so what an alert profile is, is basically a scale, I guess the best way to describe it is a, is a framework, a structure. So I, uh, I had alert headquarters right here. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go in and edit that. So you can see everything I just entered is in here. And maybe, um, maybe I decided, you know what, I'm going to take this trailer out. I'm going to remove one of the trailers. So um, oops, I'm going to take out app install. Sorry, wrong one. Um, and that's all I wanted to change. Um, so what I would do is I'd come in here, and now I want to save it as an alert. So instead, I, instead of saving it as a profile, as a structure, I'm going to say, this is good to go now. I'm going to save it as an alert. So I'm going to click Save as Alert. And now, oh, I already have this in here, so we're going to change the name. So save as Alert. Perfect. So now I have the alert in here, and it is right here. So that's the one I just created. So again, I want to go in and change it. It's a good profile, it's a good structure, um, something that I have a lot of stuff. I don't have to mess with it and get in here a ton. Maybe I've added a new trailer. I've decided um, to add some new trailers and um, I'm going to come in. Um, and this time I'm going to say, okay, it's good to go. This is like version three of the alert. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to save as alert. So again, it creates it and now I have my, my third alert in here. So, that's really what the structure does and, uh, or what the profile does, gives you a structure to go off of and uh, helps get that ready. So, um, last thing we're going to touch on um, is geofence. So, within our system, I'm going to come back out here again, I'm going to go to add an alert. So, within our system, we have landmarks and we have trailers. Um, that's what shows up on your map. So, one more time, remember, we have out here on our map, we have our trailers and our landmarks. Um, and you can see those uh, by the blue stars are our landmarks. Um, so maybe you have a particular place you don't want a landmark um, because you don't want it showing on your map. Um, it's not a, a common place of interest, um, but you do want to alert on it. Um, that's where we call our places geofence. So alerts and notifications, we're going to come in here. Um, we're going to add an alert. And it works very, very similar to the landmark setting. The only difference is um, the landmark's not set up, or the geofence is not set up. You set it up as you go. So we're going to call this geofence. We're coming to alert parameters. Um, I want arrivals and departures. And um, same thing. You're going to go ahead and, oh, let's try that again. I got click happy. Geofence, and zoom in here. We're going to go ahead and go to our satellite view, and we are in Nebraska on the border of Kansas, and we're going to geofence this farm field. So, um, so we're here. So now, what you do is you go ahead, geofence. Click the one, closes off your area, and same like we did before. So we can choose it by groups, 
We're going to add those trailers over, and then you decide your alert notifications. I'm going to say email and text. Um, I'm going to make it a, I'll show you recurring. Um, we're going to make it starting today, and we're going to say it ends the end of the month. Offense. And then same thing again, you're going to come down, decide who you want on this. We're going to go ahead and add those. And then we're going to add our contacts, Nate. And then we're going to create it. So I'm just going to go right into create. Uh, this is, I'm not going to save it as a profile. I'm going to click create. And we have our geofence alert right here. Okay? So now you have a geofence, and I can come out. I can prove to you that we do not have a landmark now in Nebraska. Or where are we? Maybe we're in, we're in Kansas. So you can see it doesn't show up. So that's really the difference with doing the landmarks in the geofence. Again, um, places of interest, places you really care about, you want to go ahead and add those as landmarks. Um, if you want them on here, you know when your trailers are there on the map. Um, and then use the alerts uh, within the geofence to, to do the other pieces. So. Um, So while we're in here, alerts and notifications, before I forget, I'll delete these. Um, so deleting landmarks, simply uh, click the garbage can, and it'll ask you if you're sure, and you can go ahead and delete those. So with that, I will pause for a second um, and see if Adam has any questions uh, that have come in. So. One of our questions is, can you set up maintenance yards as a landmark? Adam's handwriting is fantastic. Then that yeah. add trailers uh, <laughs> that need um, PM to arrival and alert. So, um, Adam, you want to answer that question? Yeah, so you can you can set up multiple alerts for uh, for your your trailer applications. Um, when you go, go ahead into the alert section there. Yep. And all you're going to do is just, you know, basically you can add which trailers you want to uh, to a PM, and then you'll be alerted in the the notes section of which trailers, you know, needed a PM. All right. So, so. come into landmarks. Is that what I'm doing here? Yep. All through here. Choose your trailers. So if you have, you had a report, you know which PM ones you wanted to do. You pick those based on that. Yep. Your trailers. And okay. then you go into your message text. In your message text, okay. And you go ahead and type in, you know, PM needed uh, upon arrival, or something along those lines. Oops. Help uh, spell. Needed. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So that's that's uh, that's a way uh, that the, that uh, piece of it can be done. Same thing, picking your people that want to be notified. You'd probably obviously pick the person at that location that would be doing the maintenance, and then you could go about that way. And then you showed how you can add them by the click here button too. Yeah, I'm not adding contacts. Yeah, and yeah, I did show them that. We added Nate and a bogus email. <laughs> and to edit those contacts, just go ahead and go up. Yeah, you can always add contacts to here, guys. Um, Adam's touching my screen. Um, you can add contacts here, too, where you go ahead and uh, you can add a contact directly in here. So basically that pop-up you guys just saw is ba it's basically this page. Um, but we, uh, you know, sometimes you get in there, you do the alert, you get all excited, and then you're like, crap, I forgot to add a contact. So now you can do that right from there. So you just click there and you can add that contact, not have to get back out. Um, same thing here, you know, your customer users. Um, so uh, this is obviously you wouldn't add. Um, uh, this is this is your team that's in here, so um, you would add them within here. So those people you keep seeing show up uh, above that. Those are all the people that are in your system that are users, I guess, of your system. So I'll pause and see if anybody else has any more questions. I think that's the only question that has come in so far. Um, but uh, like I said, this is uh, this is really um, a place for you guys to come. Um, ask questions about uh, some of the things that uh, we're going over. Um, you could also ask questions um, about maybe some other things that you have going on within the system that you might need some assistance with. 
Um, every month we plan to uh, either show a new feature or, like I said, d dive deeper into to something that uh, we're already doing that maybe we feel like we uh, haven't explained well enough yet and want to want to help you guys with. So, no more questions? Nope, nothing, nothing yet. I'll keep feeding to you. All right, perfect. So that's really all we had going over today. Um, again, um, alerts, notifications, um, biggest difference between your alerts and your, ge or I'm sorry, your landmarks and your geofence. Um, your landmarks are going to show up on your uh, map, um, points of interest, um, and then uh, the other pieces of it is your geofence, maybe a place that you don't want showing on your map, but you can always alert on those geofences within your alert settings. So that's our takeaways from today. Um, we'll be sending out um, a nice big packet of today's stuff that we went over. Um, and I would also suggest, suggest that if you have any other items that you would like us to focus on for these trainings, um, by all means, uh, send them to us. I know Adam has his uh, tech support email, um, which is, you can always send them right under here, underneath the question mark. We don't mind you sending them in here either. Uh, we'll be fine if you do that. You can always send them to the Road Ready, um, the Road Ready email that you got for our Road Ready Advanced Education Sessions. Um, so with that said, uh, I think that's it for today. Awesome. Thank you guys for joining, and we'll see you again in about a month. Um, but you'll be hearing from us again real soon more. Uh,